Now, as much as we hate to admit it, winter's coming. Look, the leaves are starting to come down out here. It's fall. And for me, that means fluid film season. Now, like I said, I usually use fluid film here. I buy it by the five gallon bucket. And I've got a cheap uh, Harbor Freight drum pump I use on the top with a wand here to fill my fluid film gun. If you go back and look at any of my fluid film videos, uh, or I think I got a rust prevention playlist actually, you'll see where I bought this gun from Kelsport Products. A couple years ago, I buy fluid film right at Napa because I can get it locally, or you can order it on the internet. Same thing with Surface Shield, you can order it on the internet. Uh, my coworker ordered in this five gallon bucket. I know fluid film's gone up this year. I'm paying 230 230 and change for a 5.28 gallon bucket. Or actually five gallons, 18.92 liters. I'm not sur sure what Surface Shield is. I think it's a little bit more expensive. I think it's over $300. But it's pretty much, this is 100% lanolin. I think the Surface Shield has some petroleum mixed into it. If we can find the contents. Oh, they stuck the label right over the contents. Son of a gun. If you want to know more, go to Surface Shield, look up Surface Shield by PB Blaster, blastercorp.com. You can look up and see what's in Surface Shield. Uh, fluid film is a straight, pretty much 100% lanolin, which is sheep wool. And there's another product called Wool Wax, which is essentially the same thing. But I use fluid film, like I said, because I can get it in Napa. But my coworker wants Surface Shield. So let's open these two buckets and take a look. And then I'm going to transfer my lid over to this one and we'll spray some surface shield on the bottom of that Mazda. Secret to any of these lanolin based rust prevention fluid film, surface wax, wool wax, is to get your vehicle, if you buy a new vehicle or lease a vehicle or whatever, spray it when the vehicle is brand new. Get it in there creeping around under the surfaces. Uh, don't put any rubberized undercoating, z bar or any of that nonsense. That traps moisture and salt up into the bottom of your car, up in the seams, and will actually rust it out faster. Z-Bart and stuff like that is terrible. I've done videos on every vehicle I've ever sprayed with fluid film that's been Z-Barted is a mess. It's garbage. So if you buy a new vehicle, have it sprayed with Crown or fluid film or Surface Shield or Wool Wax, any of that stuff, any of the, the lanolin-based undercoatings, have it sprayed when the vehicle's brand new the first winter and it will creep in there immediately, then reapply it every year and you will have virtually zero rust under your undercarriage of your vehicle. That's the secret. Get it when it's brand new. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Don't cheap out. Be like, oh, it's a you know, hundred, couple hundred bucks to get it sprayed. You just spent 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 thousand dollars on a vehicle. Do yourself a favor and spend a couple hundred dollars and get it sprayed with something like this. It's, it's well, well worth it. And uh, like I said, go on my channel, look at my rust prevention Playlist, look at my fluid film video, search fluid film on a channel. You'll see I've done 10 videos on fluid film and surface shield and stuff like that. Now all these products are safe, non-toxic. Um, you should wear like a respirator or whatever spraying it. I'm not going to wear one for this video just because it's too hard to talk with a respirator on. But you're spraying these with a aerosol or your air-powered gun. You should wear a, wear a respirator so you don't inhale it into your lungs. But it is safe and non-toxic. Uh, it's not going to hurt it. Some rubber components that will swell up like door seals and stuff. So you notice if you spray some rubber door seals, they tend to uh, get like uh, expand and get a little bit loose. Um, you can spray it on electrical com components, anything besides the exhaust system and the engine, basically, and the brakes. You can spray this stuff on. It won't hurt paint. It won't hurt wiring it won't hurt plastic just like rubber sometimes it makes it expand so you can see the color of this you can see it's pretty uh non-viscous it's pretty liquidy and that's the the secret to surface shield is they they put some kind of component in it to make it pretty uh that's pretty liquidy here and usually what i do is i got this drill here with this drill motor nice Spin it up, you see how fast that comes right off that. It's uh, pretty non-viscous, which I think their thing is, it helps it creep along better. So if we open up the uh, 
let's see surface here. If we open up the fluid film here, you're going to see it's a little more viscous. Um, and you can heat these products up. Like if you had a little cooker or whatever, you could warm them up and make them real liquidy. But you see the difference in the fluid film. I'm just going to go ahead and plop this guy right in here. See the difference in the fluid film. This is a lot. See how more viscous that is. Now this has been sitting for a couple days, so I can mix it up. Mix it up a little bit, but you can see see how much it hangs on. It doesn't like run off like the surface shield does. So whatever they put in the surface shield makes it less viscous than the fluid film. Um, which I guess helps it creep in places more, but I've never had trouble with the fluid film creeping. It'll creep anywhere as well. And, you know, I don't know if one hangs on better. This, this is more expensive. You can go on the internet and see what people have to say, surface shield versus fluid film. Some people like one, some people like the other. Like I said before, I just like fluid film because you reapply them every year anyway. So in my mind, if you're going to reapply it every year, it doesn't really matter. Um, the fluid film, like I said, is cheaper than the surface shield. I can get it locally. The surface shield you need to order in. And I should have looked up the price for it. Maybe I'll do that off camera in a minute. But what I'm going to do is snap this guy on here. Now we're going to get a little bit of fluid film in our, in our container, but that's okay. It's all the same stuff. And dump out my gun, get rid of the fluid film, switch over to surface shield. Ah, somebody blows their nose and you want to keep it. It's a line from uh, Ghostbusters. So I'm just going to dump this guy right out here. We're going to switch right over to Surface Shield. You know, the stuff is essentially the same, so it's not going to matter, but I want to try to use the guy's uh, goo that he brought me. Whenever you're spraying goo, you want to use the crop proper goo, I guess. So, well, uh, actually, I could just purge out my wand if I want right here. We'll get some surface shield kicking just to do a real test. Oh, now we're cross-contaminated. All right, that's probably good. Yep, she's drizzling already. So we got straight surface shield here. Man, it does, uh, it pumps a little harder than the fluid film. The fluid film pumps easier than this for some reason. Isn't that interesting? This Harbor Freight drum pump is the way to go. I used to try to use funnels and crap and it was a absolute disaster. Do yourself a favor and drill a hole in the lid. That way the thing can drain right back down in there. No problem. Whoop. Boom. So let's uh, climb under that Mazda and we'll start spraying. So it has 188,000 miles on it. I've only been spraying it for like one or two years with a surface shield, so it had significant, not, I won't say significant, it had under chassis rust on it to begin with on control arms and stuff like that. I'm just gonna go under the car and show you like the basic techniques, how I use the gun and get inside the cavities, what it looks like on the undercarriage. Like I said, this car is 188,000 miles on it, so there was rust and if there's significant rust started, it will continue to rust some and drop and fall off and you'll lose some of your surface shield or your fluid film over the winter. But the owner has his Honda Pilot, which I sprayed brand new coming. So we're gonna cut to that uh, here in a minute after I show you what it looks like on that car. We'll cut to the Honda Pilot, which was sprayed before any salt, any winter action. I got it when it was brand new with like, you know, thousand miles on it. And I sprayed the entire thing with surface shield before winter, so that should have really good coverage. It shouldn't have any rust on it. When that gets here, we'll take a look at that, and then I'll show you some spray techniques on the red car, what it looks like underneath, how much it held on, what it looks like under the hood, and then we'll compare it to the new car, which didn't shouldn't have any rust, the Honda Pilot, and uh, we'll finish out the video there. This car here, I have from my coworker, he prefers to use Surface Shield, and I sprayed Surface Shield on this car last year it's a what is it Toyota I guess Mazda it's a Mazda and we sprayed it with surface shield last year and we're gonna go under here and see if it held on pretty good I can see from the shine on the bottom that it did 
Okay, underneath the car here, we can see here on the inner structure where it's protected from the weather a little bit. You see all that the shine here. This is a surface shield. It's still liquidy uh, after a whole year. And if we go over here on this, oh, you know what? This car, that's right. This car's had new lower control arms and struts put on it, so that's why those are new. See all these cavities on the inside? I spray those all full of fluid film. I told them last time that the control arms were rusty. I believe he might have changed the rear ones as well. I can't see now they're original. But the underneath the center of the car has still got a ton of surface shield on it. Here, you like the engine compartment, uh, K-member, whatever it is, it's got it there. Yeah, it's a new control arm on the side as well. And new struts. But it here we can see the bottom of the frame rail. You see some surface shield still hung on there. Unfortunately, with all this plastic in the front, it's really hard to see. Uh, the K-member has got some left on it. But this is why you reapply every year. The, just the driving the car in the moisture of winter, the water on the road and the snow will wash it off, especially like the rocker panels where the tires throw all the water. It'll be on the inside of the rockers and stuff and creeps around, but the bottom it gets washed off. So that's why you reapply this stuff every year. But you can see in the center where it's protected from road spray, it's uh, still evenly coated up inside the frame hole there. Hey, the Honda Pilot showed up here, so let me show you what a vehicle that's never been run in the winter without surface shield looks like. You see all the coverage there? It's not liquidy, but it's got a, f a covering of dirt mixed in with it. That's the surface shield and dirt. You can still see some liquid up in there. And then it's got, uh, let's look at the rear here probably. That's all plastic. Let's go underneath. Now this vehicle's got about 30,000 miles on it now, but like I said, I sprayed it with Surface Shield before the first winter. So you can see up inside the holes, there's no salt there. It's still got a good covering inside the frame rails, up in those holes. It's all good here. The dirt has stuck to it on the bottom of the rocker panels. No rust anywhere. Just like the other car, in the middle, everything is good. It's still got a really good coating in the middle. Um, the lower control arms and stuff is where it wears off the fastest because just of the road spray. These are aluminum, but you can see there is still some dirt on the aluminum, so it is sticking to that. Same thing on this side, absolutely zero rust. We've got a good coating of dirt film here, and I'll show you on my finger on the bottom here. That is all, oh, that's undercoating actually. But here, here I'll show you on my finger it's some of the, the dirt. You can see that the dirt mixes with it here and it makes a good coating that helps hold the surface shield on. Same thing with fluid film, it helps hold it on. It's sprayed good all the way down, we've got good coverage. Underneath the back of the vehicle we've got very little surface rust, just a little bit on like the bare metal flange of the rear end and a couple of the bolts where it washed off there. But absolutely no rust on the, on the control arms or any of the sheet metal. No rust in the frame rails or anything like that. It's still all coated really well. Um, up inside the rocker panels, it's got a good coating there. You can see where that hole is. It's all coated inside the frame good. Um, the only place it washes off from the road spray is like the lower control arms. It does wash off just from the uh, driving it in the wet conditions. But this car was driven probably, I don't know, 40 miles a day round trip to work in the winter every day with the road salt and the spray. So it's really good. It's really good on the underside. It's all good here. It's still got a film on the drive shaft. Everything looks good. Coated really well. So uh, I would say that's been a success the first winter with the surface shield. You can see it there. All good. Everything's good. It's in all the seams. I don't see any rust, any surface rust stuck to anything like that. It looks like it coated it really, really well. I spray in the doors. I spray up the holes there. You can see there's some in the drain holes of the doors. A lot of doors have rubber plugs like this. So you can up here you can take out or you can screw out that rubber bumper and spray in there. There's actually a plug in the center I can remove and spray. But you can see it's all good. And what you can see a little bit here, I talked about rubber seals. This rubber seal, it's making it expand just a little bit. There's some dips and pieces, but it's fine. It still seals there. So you might notice that um, we got in the door seals there, the front of the door, it's still coated down the door. You can see that running right down. And I remove all the body plugs when I spray these doors. There's body plugs in the rockers and stuff on the inside underneath the car. There's one there 
in the door jam if you can see that um, there you can see a little bit of the rubber that swelled up just a little bit but that's that's better than rust and the underside of the door is coated and absolutely zero rust in the seams or anything all the way around now if you spray this stuff and you don't like it or it gets on your clothing you can always take a rag and just wipe it right off you know you see that there if i didn't want it there i can just wipe it right off with a rag you can do whatever you want it doesn't hurt any of the surfaces so you can remove anything you want see the rear cross number here has still got a really good coating on it it's got some wash off just from road spray but all the all the uh, suspension is at least got a film layer on it uh, the spare tires got a film spare tires always rust you can drop that down spray above it the floors back here are all coated really well the receiver hitch you always see rusty receiver hitches i spray those that's got a good coating on it there and up inside the body and the rear quarter panels and stuff i'm going to go ahead and spray this guy and get it off the rack and uh, have another happy customer with their surface shield but kind of hard to see but I just go and I spray it right in there. And later, when I get down, I'll get uh, down on the ground and do this all the way under here. But this thing's got a lot of plastic wheel wells, so really all we can get is a little bit of the frame here. You can see how much I put on. I coat it pretty good. So like this, I just take the gun and I apply. Coat it up good. I I like this emitter wand because I can get inside the frame rails. I spray inside the frame right here like this. Like I said, this car's got a lot of miles on. I see a little bit of scale falling off there. But that's fine. Go right over it. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but... You don't want to get on the brakes, obviously, get on the brakes, but I am going to go in these new control arms and spray it in every hole of the new control arm, like so, and then coat, coat it all on the outside. I do get the struts like this from the bottom. You can go near. I tried to get the dust shield just a little bit on the back, but don't get it on the brake rotor. Steering here the half shaft inside here inside all the holes this is kind of, this is very difficult to do with one hand but I basically spray it till it turns yellow like this you see that's a really good coating like I said, I suggest uh, driving on like a dirt road or something. Afterwards, a little bit of road dust and dirt will stick to this, and it makes kind of makes like a keeps it from washing off because it makes like an impenetrable barrier. Like the dirt here, you can see the dirt gets into it, and you can still wipe it off if you want to. If you don't like it, you can take it. I'm just using my finger and wipe it off. If you had a rag, you could wipe that right off. But the dirt helps to make a barrier to uh, road spray. I was suggest that people find a dirt road like that to drive down let me try to I got two hands working now let me try to show you what I how I apply this I get it up under this plastic where the body is this car is a really bad example because it's got all this underbody cladding which makes it really hard to get to all the places like trucks and a lot of cars don't have all this on there and I'm not going to take all this off like the guy doesn't you know it is what it is but if you have a regular vehicle that doesn't have all this you can easily get to all the underside surfaces very easily but I do the best I can with it get the drive shaft here this thing's four wheel drive so I get the drive shaft you know, if you get it on exhaust like like that, it'll just melt off. It'll smell and it'll like smoke a little bit, but it'll melt off. But don't don't spray the exhaust system. It, it won't help it at all. It'll just melt off it.
try, try to spray the goo in every hole that you can find. It's always a good life lesson. So you get the idea here, I just try to spray it everywhere I can. I'm going to go ahead and coat the car, but you can see the coverage, I do it until it's got a good level of uh, you know, product on there. I probably put it on a little heavier than I need to, but I also encourage the owners to go drive like down a dirt road and find some dust to cover it up because it mixes with the surface shield and makes nice protective coating, it helps it not wash off. But this should be reapplied every year just because road wash does wash any types of these materials off the bottom of the vehicle but we got a good coating started you can see the shine on it here plenty of material i'm just going to spend about an hour an hour and 20 minutes spraying this car top and bottom uh here we're gonna once i get it down off the rack we'll show you under the hood how i apply it under the hood and stuff like that but under the hood i do everything under the hood except for the belts obviously in the engine but this inner structure you can see it's all held on really good it's got some dirt stuck to it but I've done all the brake lines and stuff like that. I haven't reapplied this year yet, but this is what it looks like after a winter being on here. It's mostly under the hood at six really good because the, you know, the water spray doesn't get under here as much, but I've done all the structure here. It doesn't hurt electronics. So I've done like the computer, the aluminum on a computer that can corrode uh, the battery box. Under the battery terminals, you can spray them. It doesn't matter. Spray the firewall, the brake master cylinder uh, booster and all that. Um, underneath the hood, inside the hood, here and all the panels. You can see it's all held on there good. So the only really rust I see is where the hood prop rubbers have rubbed and wore the paint off. But like I said before, this car has 188,000 miles on it, so it's actually in really good shape. Um, I'm about ready to open the doors and take the... Uh, there's plugs here you can see on the inside of the doors. It's held on good there. I'll pull these rubber plugs out and I'll shoot down inside the doors it'll be good I do a little bit here on the dog leg um, I spray up the edge of the doors here uh, and just get it there do front and rear doors I've done inside the hatch already um, once I oh actually here's a good tip always cover the windshield because the stuff gets on the glass it will streak really easily and it's hard to get off so I always cover the windshield with a piece of canvas so the surface shield seems to be working really well on that Honda Pilot and working on that red Mazda. Like I said, I always, I usually use fluid film, but the customer wanted this surface shield. So I'm applying that here. He supplied that f to me, but I usually buy fluid film at Napa, $230 for a five gallon bucket. I believe the surface shield is a little more money. I think it's closer to $300 for a five gallon bucket, but it is a little bit different technology there in the mix. But you can see it's worked really well. Uh, Definitely want to rust proof your vehicle with any type of this lanolin stuff. It's worth it. You see the Honda Pilot under there, still like brand new underneath. Vehicles are just so expensive nowadays, you can't afford to have them turn into a ball of rust. Especially if you plan on keeping a vehicle for like 10 years and you live in a salt environment. You definitely need to spray uh, any type of lanolin based fluid film, wool wax, surface shield, uh, crown, similar stuff. Get it sprayed underneath. It'll protect the vehicle. It'll save your brake lines and floorboards if you want to. I, I run all old cars. I spray them on everything. I spray it on everything. I've, I've got a 1995 Ford truck I still drive every day in the winter, and it hasn't gotten any worse rust-wise since I started spraying it about six years ago. I put 60,000 miles on it, and it is maintaining it, and I'm continuing to drive a 30-year-old truck uh, in the salt New York State winter. So get yourself something like this and or that do it if you want to save your vehicle they're too expensive to let them rot away nowadays so uh thanks for watching we'll see you next time hopefully back building on projects like this dodge daytona clone here at the quick speed shop